Yeah, thanks very much, uh, look. Um, Minister, uh, my question is about the proportion of commissioned officers uh, in the Defence Forces that have less than five years' experience. And obviously, you'll be aware of the importance of ensuring that we have sufficient experience within the commissioned officers' ranks of the Defence Forces. Can you let us know what's the proportion, and do you have concerns about it if it is the case that the proportion of uh, officers who have that level of experience is declining? Yeah, thanks. So there's, a, there's a whole series of deputies here, so I, I hope you, you, you'll give me a little bit more time latitude in terms of answering the questions, so I can try to, to answer the questions that are, that, that are in front of us. As of the 31st of December 2021, i.e. the end of last year, the strength of the Permanent Defence Forces was 8,468 personnel, or 89% of the agreed establishment of 9,500. While the Government remains committed to returning to and maintaining the agreed strength of each branch of the Defence Forces, there are a number of factors, many of which are hard to predict, which will impact on the time frame within which this will be achieved. Uh, in addition to a range of measures already undertaken to address the staffing issues, uh, the report of the Commission of the Defence Forces, which is currently being finalised, as I said earlier, uh, will address uh, uh, this matter very directly. As regards current recruitment initiatives, uh, there is ongoing um, a general service recruitment uh, which uh, resulted in 576 personnel being inducted in 2021. Uh, the level of turnover in the Defence Force in 2021 was 7.89%, which includes those in training. Uh, it is worth noting that the average turnover rate for general service uh, recruits uh, uh, who do not, for a variety of reasons, uh, uh, complete training has been approximately 30% over the last number of years. Some 31% of commissioned officers have been inducted uh, in the past five years, which, um, Jim, is what you were raising, um, uh, and that, that figure is 31% uh, uh, inducted in the last five years. Uh, in addition to ongoing recruitment, the scope of direct entry competitions, uh, along with the terms and conditions, continue to be expanded and revised to improve intake. Uh, the re-entry campaign for former members of the Permanent Defence Forces also continues. Uh, the service commitment scheme in both the Air Corps and Naval Service and a special Naval Service tax credit for seagoing personnel are examples of targeted retention measures that I've introduced. Uh, there has been significant progress on pay uh, arising out of uh, increases uh, due from recent pay agreements, uh, the most recent of which was a 1% increase uh, in, uh, on annualised sa salaries or 500 euros, whichever is the greater, on the 1st of October last year, with further increases to follow. Additionally, the um, Public Service Pay Commission uh, report on recruitment and retention in the Defence Forces made a range of recommendations with a view to addressing recruitment and retention issues, and these have, have been progressed through a series of projects. While the 2022 recruitment plan is not yet finalised, the Defence Forces remain committed to optimising the number of personnel inducted. I, I am confident that along with all other initiatives underway, uh, the pay benefits delivered by the public service pay agreements in tandem with the implementation of the PSPC recommendations uh, will improve recruitment and retention challenges uh, currently being experienced by the Permanent Defence Forces. Furthermore, as I've already noted uh, today, the Commission on the Defence Forces is finalising its work with a view to completing the report as soon as possible. The Commission's report, uh, when submitted, uh, will be fully considered at that point. And there is, as you'd expect, in the terms of reference of that Commission, a very strong emphasis on recruitment uh, and, and retention and HR within the Defence Forces. Yeah, th thanks very much, uh, Cahirla. Minister, thanks for your um, answer. Obviously, recruitment and retention are hugely important issues in the Defence Forces. And I suppose the focus of my question was to try to identify the proportion of commissioned officers that have more than five years' experience. And I think, Minister, you'll probably recall, I think you were at the RACO conference last year and you probably heard its General Secretary state at the time that 24% uh, of personnel in the Defence Force have less than five years' experience. But for officers, it was 35% have less than five years' uh, service. And obviously, this is linked in with the whole question of recruitment and retention. 
But I think it is important that we try to ensure that we retain experienced officers within the defence forces. You know, experience matters a huge amount, particularly in areas such as uh, the defence of the country. I'm not suggesting that inexperienced people don't have an important role to play, but it is important amongst commissioned officers within the ranks of the defence forces that there is that body of experience there. And I just wonder, Minister, are there any other options you think are available to ensure we can retain uh, those commissioned officers within the forces? Yeah, look, I, I, I think um, um, you know. I, I think you highlight an important area. You know, the, the the way in which we solve the the recruitment and retention issues in the defence forces uh, isn't simply going to be solved by you know a huge intake in a very very short space of time, mm -hmm. um, because of course that has consequences from a training perspective, uh, from a command and control perspective, from an experience perspective, and so on. Uh, and so um, that is why we have an, an ongoing discussion with the Defence Forces, uh, with the Chief of Staff and his team, uh, in terms of um, how can we max out on the number of people coming in each year, but at the same time ensure that we have uh, appropriate um, training procedures uh, to ensure that we, that we maintain the skill sets that we need and the leadership that we need within the Defence Forces uh, to deliver on the asks of them. Um, so, you know, 35 per cent, uh, as you say, I think the, the figure I gave deputy um, was, uh, was some 31 per cent of commission officers have been inducted in the past five years. But, but either way, it's about one in three. Um, uh, and so uh, we need to ensure that we hold on to the experience that is, is in the Defence Forces uh, where possible. Uh, and I certainly think that uh, the direction of travel that the, that the commission report will, will provide in terms of certainty, ambition, resources, um, uh, may well, uh, I hope, uh, I encourage many people uh, to stay in the Defence Forces for longer, um, uh, and, um, uh, uh, and in doing so, uh, hold on to that really important experience. We have you know, very significant skill sets within the Defence Forces, and sometimes that skill set gets targeted from outside and people get headhunted out of the defence forces, mm. whether they're pilots or whether they're engineers or whether they're cybersecurity experts uh, or whatever, um, drivers. Um, and uh, we need to try to make sure that what drives people to join the defence forces uh, remains burning in them um, uh, in terms of their willingness to stay and, and serve their country. And there's a whole series of factors that, um, that, um, uh, that need to be taken into account of for that.